Harakiri is quite simply one of the best films ever made. And that's it. That's what you need to know. You can turn this review off right now. And I know that sounds like an exaggeration or a hyperbole. You know, nowadays we always say, oh, so-and-so is the best of all time, or so-and-so is the worst of all time, but it really is the case with Harakiri. This is the kind of film that the word masterpiece was made for. As film fans, you and I both know that you can go through certain slumps where you just end up watching bad film after bad film after bad film, and, and eventually something comes along, you get that film. That film which reminds you just why you fell in love with the medium in the first place. So Harakiri is set in the 17th century. Samurais who have no jobs called Ronin are just wandering about the land. Because there's no war, they have no jobs, which means there's no peace for them in their lives. Quite ironic, really. One such masterless Ronin arrives at a clan's mansion. His name is Sugumo, and he requests to be seen with the clan's leader, Sato. He asks that he can commit the honourable suicidal ritual known as Harakiri, which involves using a short blade for self-disembowelment. He wants to do this because there's a sense of uh, disgrace in being a jobless samurai, and he wants to go out with a sense of honour. Sato then tells him a story attempting to um, discourage him from committing Harakiri. He tells him that there's been many cases like this where Ronin have come and they've asked to commit Harakiri, but the clan had pity on them. He says that these Ronin didn't even want to commit Harakiri in the first place, they were just looking for sympathy so they could be uh, offered a job. And the clan had agreed, but now they've wised up. So Sato tells him the story of the uh, most recent occurrence where this happened of a young man called uh, Hijiro Motome. And we're shown this story through a flashback. And it's a very difficult story to watch because there's a lot of pain involved in the Harakiri scene. Sugumo seems unfazed. Sato asks Sugumo whether he knows the man or not. And Sugumo replies no. And then fast forward a couple of scenes, we end up in a courtyard where the Harakiri is about to take place. And Sugumo delays slightly by um, requesting a specific second. By second, what they mean is, in case he's unable to commit the Harakiri fully, someone is chosen to lop his head off, so it's ended quickly. So he's picked a second, and it just so happens that the second is not there on the day, so the clan sends someone to go and fetch him. And while we're waiting, Sugumo decides to tell a little story of his own about how he came to this state, and that is where the movie really starts to get going. And I'll stop there, because in my opinion, it's best to go into this kind of film blind. The film has a simple story, but it's incredibly told. Thematically, it's about so many different things at the same time, and it works on so many different levels. I mean, on one hand, you could see this as a simple revenge tale or a Greek tragedy. On the other, it can be seen as a critique of the Japanese ruling body at the time of when this film was made. It's an exploration of manliness, honour, family values, the mob mentality, the sheep mentality, our inner strength as human beings versus our outer confidence. The film slices into the hypocrisy of our nature, wanting to appear to be upstanding as opposed to actually being upstanding through character. And it also highlights the questionability of what actually ends up going down in the history books, which, as we all know, are written by the winners. The dialogue in this film is so rich that just simple one or two lines really stick with you. Life lessons are provided in them. Some highlights include one part where a character mentions that what befalls others today may be your own fate tomorrow. Or swordsmanship untested in battle is like the art of swimming mastered on land. Or one of my favourites, the suspicious mind conjures its own demons. In other words, if you're the kind of person that's uh, stealing behind people back, backbuying, etc, etc, then you're likely to suspect others of this more than those who are of a kind nature, who are of a, a naive nature. Even things that don't need to be given too much focus are executed magnificently, it's not an action film, but there are several samurai duels in it, which are pretty much byproducts of events in the story. And the black and white crisp cinematography in these duels is just beautiful. The suspense is gripping and the acting is perfect. For me, there was three key characters in this film. All the three who I've already mentioned. And pay close attention to the uh, clan chief when watching the film. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he's not... Uh, the main character, he's not the second main character, but the film does act as a really good character study for him in particular. I won't go into it because obviously this is a movie review, not an analysis, but keep your eye on his choices of words and how as a character he develops and slowly, slowly begins to change. Maybe change is not even the right word, more like reveal himself. 
Something that the film achieves really well is making you sympathise and empathise with characters at all the right moments and it makes you feel really bad by forcing you to confront your own prejudice stances against certain characters. Along with the people in the film, you find yourself holding a preconditioned opinion of someone without fully understanding their situation. And it's only after you do you get an emotional punch to the stomach because you realise just what this apparently immoral character went through And there's a massive sense of irony in seeing said character condemned in dishonour for the very same action which makes him more honourable than those around him. I know it might sound odd because I haven't actually mentioned the events in the movie but if you haven't seen this I really recommend you just dive in without having the tale ruined for you. Going back to said character, it really harks back to the whole thing about not judging a book by its cover which is one of the main things I took away from this movie. Sugumo tells his story and Sato has his say, then Sugumo tells a later section of his story, Sato again has his say and it goes back and forward like that. And within this little game the samurai Bushido code is toyed with, ethics are called into question, and characters are manipulated and humiliated by Sugumo who it turns out is either quite crafty or, as you'll see when you watch the film, pretty close to just going over the edge. A game is being played by multiple parties through the dialogue and a dilemma manifests itself for the clan leader, whose loyalty to the code is tested and called into question. You do get a real sense of outrage after watching this heartbreaking tale of hypocrisy, choices, and the hypocrisy surrounding those choices. You're asked just how far do traditions and protocol have to go when they are a direct cause of human suffering and are given more importance than the human condition. It's interesting to note that the film starts with the clan symbol, an empty suit of armour. This signifies the hollow nature of the clan, or at least their loyalty to their own code. Eventually that is taken down and exposed. It really is gripping to be a spectator in this uh, back and forth between the shabby Sugomo and the clan elder Sato, surveying the Ronin from up top of the balcony. Like I said, they play with each other, they toy with each other, and eventually I came to the realisation that one of the two's reasoning in this great debate was more interested in protecting the traditions instead of doing the right thing. As I already said, and as you'll have guessed by the title anyway, there is a scene where a man commits harakiri, and it has to be one of the most gut-wrenching scenes I've ever seen on film. But I guarantee you, after you've seen the film, you'll have remembered that scene more for its emotional aspect than its aesthetic one. A testament to the brilliance of the film. There are so many lessons to be taken away from this movie. And I suppose if you'd want to roll it all into one, the best way to say it would be this. At the end of the day, the one code of honour that ranks above all others is the human one. Harakiri gets a very well deserved and a very rare 10 out of 10 for me. I can't recommend this movie enough. You can't read about it, you can't listen to a review about it, you can't see clips or trailers about it, just see the whole thing from beginning to end, it's only around two hours long. Even if you're not a fan of black and white films or foreign films in which you have to watch subtitles, if you're going to give anyone a go, give that opportunity to Harakiri. I guarantee you it will make the most of it.